morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 391 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Tuesday, May 28th, 2024, and it looks like it's going to be a lovely day here at the Beaver Lodge. My, did it rain yesterday. Oh. Like, lots. A whole lot. But hey, Mother Earth got a good drink. That's uh, that's good these days. That's good these days. So we will take it. I am your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey. And with me is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a Tuesday morning nibble for you. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly. How is your mental health today, sir? Um, I think it's okay. Still okay. grappling with a few things, you know. I did discuss. I watched Jerry SMR last night. Yeah, I, I discussed a bit of it last night. I didn't get into everything. There are some things that still need to remain private while I sort them through in my in my head, and, and some things that will remain private no matter what, right? But I'll divulge, divulge a certain amount to, to let people know where my head is at and, and what's going on. So, yeah, there's you know, still a fair bit of anxiety there over the uh, unknown future. And unknown future being, you know, the future is never known, but there was at least a certain amount you could predict when you knew you were going to have your same job every day. And that's what I don't know. That's the unknown right now. So that's yeah. that's the, um, the uh, puzzling, puzzling, uh, anxiety-inducing thing right now for me so yeah that's where i'm at that's where i'm at hmm. how about well, yourself i'm glad i'm glad you're doing a little better uh, i'm i i'm doing well i've had a uh, couple of instances over the past few days of other people being in a bad mood and sort of transferring it on to me and them feeling better once they have but me feeling like crap mm. so you've been the sounding board yeah like somebody comes to you like this walks you know just like like, you know, just imagine, I'm not saying that this happened with my beaver sweetie, but imagine, you know, like just you're at home and, you know, you know, your, your sweetie comes home and as soon as they walk through the door, it's like just 40 minutes of just bleh. Mm. This went wrong. This went wrong. This person's terrible. And this is terrible. And life sucks. And it's like, and how was your day? <laughs> you know, and then it's sort of like, okay, that was a lot. And then it's sort of like, okay, well, sweetie, you know, could, could you just be home for five minutes and blah, 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 blah. see i've had a hard day too would really like a hug could we have no okay can we have some positivity when you come home can this be a happy mo- no okay we're gonna talk about okay 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes okay now i'm mad <laughs> and it's like i feel so much better i got it all off my chest yeah but now you just dumped it on me <laughs> it's like ah. Yeah, mood poisoning. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so yeah, the the last uh, and I'm, normally I'm pretty good at just letting go, but the last two days has just been sort of like, ugh, come on, man. 
It's like, you know, and after like they do that, like for about like 30 minutes, it's, let's go have some fun. It's like, well, I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling like fun right now. Well, I was when we met. <laughs> but it's like, ee. Uh, so yeah, it's a, uh, it, uh, yeah, a little, a little heavy in that way, but otherwise, uh, just uh, doing wonderful. Um, you know, uh, as kids have been seeing, we have uh, some, uh, projects at home, the herb garden, whatnot. And so that's doing well. And uh, yesterday we planted a raspberry bush. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of fruit in a few years and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we are having some issues with our renovation for some reason. Um, they, uh, they installed the, the insulation and then for some reason our siding wasn't here. So we had to wait and that was about two weeks or so mm. uh and then they came and they uh put on some flashing um uh, and then um we're not sure if it was put on according to the specifications we had agreed uh but they uh they started putting on the flashing one morning and then the following morning they came back to pick up some equipment and radio silence Oh, you've not heard from them since? We hadn't heard. Of, they weren't here on Thursday. They weren't here on Friday. They didn't say if they had another contract from what they didn't tell us. They weren't going to be working on the house those two days. Mm. Uh, we sent them a couple messages, uh, and they didn't come yesterday either. And then yesterday, some point during the day, we got a message saying, uh, would you come to our office? We need to talk. So after the meeting, after the show, well, we're going to the office. We need to talk uh, about I don't have no idea what the hell's going on. No, but that never sounds like a good thing, right? <laughs> well, when a contractor like comes just comes up one morning, picks up their tools, leaves, mm -hmm. doesn't tell you why, doesn't tell you that they're not working on the house, and doesn't come back for two days, you send them two, three message calls, they don't return them, and then one day they just say, can you meet us in our office, please? Um, what happened? Tell us why. Yeah, what happened? Right, so something why you didn't come and the insulation once it's installed it has 30 days exposed to the light or whatnot and else the warranty starts to well uh mm. 30 days is a uh, friday mm. so yeah and they want to have a meeting on tuesday um, i don't know what that means so uh i don't know what's going on but right now uh uh, this is about a thirty thousand dollar job, and right now we're looking at our investment going Poof, because uh, somebody's not able to put on the siding within thirty days. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I'm not. Uh... <sighs> oh, please contact. Okay, all right. If I need additional support, contact Miss. All right. Uh, I, I'm not sure how you, uh, how the how Miss can help on this one, but uh, thank you, Moan. So yeah. Um, yeah, we're 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 a bit in the, in in the unknown at the moment, and we're a little confused. Uh, so um, yesterday was been trying to uh, an exercise in uh, trying not to worry about what it is. So we really tried to adopt the mental position of a um, right now it's just a meeting, so you mm -hmm. don't know if you actually have something to worry about. It's curious, it's odd, um, but so far it's not bad. So let's not worry until we actually know that there's something to worry about. Who knows? Maybe it's it's just maybe we just need to discuss a few things. Maybe there's a pricing thing that's changed. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, and that's all it is. But um, yeah, I'm. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I was confused with by by like you said, uh, Kit Moan says no communication isn't a good sign. I, that's what I was really worried about. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not, not worried, but concerned. It's like who just comes and grabs their tools up and leaves and doesn't come back for three days. It doesn't tell you doesn't tell you, like, for example, uh, we have this emergency thing. We have to do at this other house. So we won't be here for the next two days, but we'll be back, we'll be back on Tuesday or something. But there was just nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, uh, uh, I'm a, a little better at that than my beaver sweetie is. So, he was basically ruminating and going around in a loop, wondering what was wrong and trying to prepare, prepare a whole bunch of defenses and whatnot. And, and I'm just sort of like, you know, try to be calm and trying to keep myself calm. But yeah, yeah, we're both worth look at both looking at the prospect of uh, having uh, all that insulation and all that work done like this be for nothing. If mm. the warranty on the stuff is off, what's the point of putting siding on top of it? Yeah, that that would uh, that would suck. Yeah, 
So yeah, uh, we'll find out more. But right now, yeah, the un- unknown is not great. Like this different type of unknown than yours, but mm-hmm. not great. Still not great. All right, kits and cubs, moving on to the show today. Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to start with uh, some news. Uh, we, uh, yeah, some, some indigenous related news. You know that uh, recently we told you about what was going on in Grassy Knolls and, uh, you know, with the, the mercury poisoning and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, it seems that uh, there is another issue that has uh, been taking place. Um, it's in northern Ontario. It seems that there's an old hospital in a town called Moose Factory that has needed major repairs. Uh, and last week uh, at the hospital, the ceiling caved in. So Indigenous leaders are accusing Ottawa of discrimination. Uh, this is at uh, the Winnebago General Hospital in Moose Factory, Ontario. Carmen Tozer is the chair of the board there. Um, and uh, basically said about um, there was leaking water and basically ruined an office ceiling in the 75-year-old building. And he says, so it actually collapsed onto the floor. This morning we had another incident apparently within our dental offices where a fan fell off its moorings. Uh, he says, I'd have to tell you, I suppose anywhere in Austin, Ontario, this hospital would not be in use. That's a former tuberculosis sanatorium that was built on an island in a river just south of James Bay. And it's supposed to serve about 15,000 people most of them indigenous, or many of them indigenous, but many patients have to be flown to all other parts of the province because the building is in disrepair disrepair and can't provide all the services. Uh, Peter Wesley, the chief of uh, Moose Cree First Nation, um, has uh, asked Ottawa to escalate, has, well, has basically participated in a press conference to call Ottawa, um, to make good on its financial promise because it had committed to funding the project of the hospital for 45 percent and the hospital president and ceo lynn ennis says that her calls to the prime minister's office have gone unanswered ever since she learned that the funding was not included in the last federal budget mm. so uh she says as a first nations led organization the silence from prime minister trudeau and his government is a harsh reminder of the systemic racism and broken promises that continue to plague our country What other conceivable explanation could there be for the abrupt revocation of funding for a hospital in dire need of replacement for patients? This facility is also a grim reminder of the past families across northern Ontario and the Northwest Territories who were were torn apart as children were sent to the building to be isolated and treated for TB. So uh, some of the kids that were patients as a kid, are now patients as adults in the same place. It's not just a building. It's a symbol of the enduring colonial legacy that our people are forced to confront daily. Uh, construction was supposed to begin this summer. And the Ontario government says that it has its share of the funding ready to go, but in a statement, Indigenous Services Canada says it has already contributed $158 million to the project and has recently significantly increased health transfers to the provinces. So they're basically saying, take the money from other parts, other pools, Ontario, that we've already given to you. Uh, Yep. And right now, uh, members of the First Nation are worried that contractors and bank funding will walk away from the project if the full funding amount isn't met soon. Mm. Yep. Not quite sure why it is that the federal government decided that this hospital that clearly needs some repairs was not worth it because when it comes to indigenous health care, the federal government is responsible. But it seems yeah, that's uh, not, that a, this, not a provincial. Uh, it's not yeah. a provincial matter, right? No, that's not a provincial matter. In, indigenous housing and indigenous health care. What about, uh, you know, when they say that the federal government doesn't deliver health care, it does to veterans and mm-hmm. indigenous people. Mm-hmm. So it's responsible for those. Um, also today, on a happier note, in Ontario, MPP Sol Mamakwa will be asking for the first time a question in his native language, Ojikri. For the first time in its history, the Ontario legislature will allow interpret and transcribe a language other than English and French. New Democrat Sol Mamakwa sparked the change after convincing government house leader Paul Calandra to allow him to speak in the language his parents taught him. 
About 100 supporters will gather in Toronto to watch the historic moment, including Mamakwa's mother, siblings, friends, and First Nation leaders. Mamakwa from Kingfisher Lake First Nation in Northern Ontario says the milestone is important because Indigenous people are losing their languages and his speech and question in the legislature will mark a step towards reconciliation. Calandra changed the standing orders on languages spoken in the legislative chamber to include any Indigenous language spoken in Canada. Apparently, the legislature in Ontario did not allow for languages other than English and French up until very recently to be spoken in the chamber. So... Um, small thing, symbolic in many ways, but uh, very important. Uh, there's absolutely no reason in Canada for which the languages of our first peoples should not be welcome in any representative chamber in this country. There's just no reason whatsoever that it shouldn't. So uh, I am glad that this is happening. Uh, again, every now and then, right? It's like, yay firsts, but 2024? Really? To allow someone to speak their language in the people's house? Okay. Well, I, 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 it's one of those things, right? It's like, yay, that it's happening. And it's like, really? 2024. You know, there's something that needs to be said when it comes to bilingualism in this country. It is automatically assumed if you say that you're bilingual that you speak yes. English and French, the two official languages. But that is not what the definition of bilingualism is. Yeah, it's official bilingualism in Canada, but it's not bilingual. It's not bilingual. Bilingual is two languages. Period. That's it. A ASL in English. There you go. That's bilingual. Mandarin and Cantonese, two different dialects. Same language, but two different dialects spoken completely different. Vietnamese and Mandarin. That's bilingual. So it's something that needs to be addressed, I feel. I know official bilingualism in this country represents English and French, but to say, oh, I'm bilingual, does not mean you speak English and French. You could be English and Spanish in many ways. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. And Kit Michael says, uh, Mamakwa is a residential school survivor and wasn't allowed to speak his language as a child. Mm -hmm. In residential schools, that was the case. Good. Uh, I didn't know that he was a residential school survivor. Kit Michael, thank you for uh, letting us uh, know that. <laughs> How about English and Big Latin? <laughs> Ix nay on the ig pay atmel atmel. All right, so yeah, uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, news and a little bit of good news. Uh, now more uh, news uh, in uh, Mother Nature news. Um, according to the National Weather Service uh, in the, the United States. Uh, says that the weather's not over. It still expects damaging wind and large hail to be a threat over much of Texas and southern Oklahoma on Tuesday. Um, at least 21 people now, including two young children, are dead and hundreds more injured after a series of violent storms ripped through multiple U.S. states. Uh, the extreme weather, de extreme weather destroyed homes and businesses. Um, strong winds flying debris and turning over vehicles. Large hail and reported tornadoes destroyed homes in Texas, Oklahoma, Kentucky and Arkansas. Bob Orovic with the U.S. National Weather Service says that so far this year there have been nearly 1,000 tornadoes reported in the U.S. so, so far already, which is above, about 30% above average usually. Um, so that is pretty... Uh, he, he says that the weather pattern uh, that's currently in effect is expected to stay active for at least the next few days. Um, and... Uh, when we're talking about tornadoes, it's not just limited to the United States because yesterday a tornado touched down in Rigo, Quebec, uh, late afternoon, which caused some damage to homes. Uh, the funnel of cloud and the strong wind was captured on video, and Environment Canada has confirmed, says that the video confirms it was a tornado. Uh, there are more videos that shows a roof, <clears throat> sorry, a roof being blown off the house. Uh, Rigo is a small town near the Ontario border and uh, the home of one of our founding sponsors. Uh, so I need to, to check in. Uh, with our friends uh, from the Peppermaster, because uh, that is uh, where they are uh, located. It's where they make their wonderful treats uh, for all of us to enjoy. Um, so that's wind. Uh, not much more news on the wildfire front so far, uh, which is good. Um, but And uh, yesterday when we talked about uh, the landslide in Papua New Guinea, um, the la basically we're now three days after it's happened and equipment still hasn't been able to reach the disaster zone to help with the rescue and recovery. Um, 
it seems that uh, the face of the mountain slipped as people were sleeping. So it happened really early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many people got caught because they weren't able to uh, get out. Uh, as we mentioned, there's, uh, it's estimated that about 2,000 people uh, are buried under about eight foot, eight feet of mud and stuff. It's just over terrible. Meters. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, not eight feet, eight meters. Debris oh. as deep as eight meters. Uh, blocked roads, uh, at least 180 yeah, homes, possibly more, have been completely wiped out. And uh, they actually don't know uh, how many people are dead or missing or actually survived because there hasn't been a census of the area for more than two decades. Mm. Uh, Sirhan Aduprak, who runs the International Organization for Migrations Mission in Papua New Guinea, says there is water flowing underneath the debris and the floor soil ground on which this debris sits, so we fear that this mud can turn the ground into a slide at any other moment so that it can continue. And it seems that uh, the mudslide has led to some unrest uh, in the region. He says, quote, people in communities started fighting each other on Saturday morning. 24 hours later, eight people were killed. Tens of thousands of houses have been burnt. That's all bad news. Yeah. He says aid convoys may need police escorts because other criminal groups, quote, rascals as they are known, opportunists can try to capitalize on this chaos and they may attack or try to carry out some carjacking as well as looting even humanitarian supplies. So uh, that could uh, that could uh, end up being a, a bigger and sticker situation over the couple of days if uh, this is leading to infighting among the people on... Uh, mm -hmm on the island itself. Oh, boy. That's bad. Oh, That's bad the, news. Yeah. There, there is a little bit of um, wildfire news, I guess, but not big. It's just basically uh, the return home in Fort Nelson uh, did start in effect. Uh, so uh, people have been going home. Mayor Rob Fraser says the town itself was mostly unscathed, but out in the rural areas, they're going to see a lot of damage, particularly out on the edges of the community to the north that the fire burned right up to the highway. So there are blackened trees and there's some significant damage to the north and the west of the community. Um, 11 properties were damaged, four houses were destroyed. There are still some fires burning nearby, so the community is still under evacuation alert and residents need to be ready to leave again at uh, any moment's notice. Um, so there you go. Well, how about I buy you a beer for a billion dollars? Ooh. A billion dollars. Such a deal. Have you folks seen this? I've got a graphic on the screen for those listening. Doug Ford's billion dollar booze boondoggle. <sighs> Corporate handout agreement with the beer store, the beer store Molson Labatt Sleeman, costs $225 million. Rebate of LCBO fees, the beer store, Molson, Labatt, Sleeman, $375 million. Wholesale discount as set out in the agreement. A low estimate of giving big grocery stores a 10% discount on buying products from the LCBO. So Walmart, Loblaw, Metro, Costco, mm -hmm. $150 million. Foregone licensing fees, a low estimate of lost revenue as a result of not charging licensing fees to 8,500 new stores similar to other jurisdictions. Large grocers, Walmart, Loblaw, Metro, Costco, chain convenience stores, Circle K, Quickie, 7-Eleven, $300 million minimum. Total, $1 billion, $50 million. Let me buy you a beer for a billion bucks. Jesus Christ almighty. Yeah, we are so far from a buck of beer now. One billion, one billion dollars. And all to clear the decks in case he wants to go to an election early. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, Meanwhile, people can't get a doctor. Healthcare workers haven't had a pay rise in years. Hospitals are crumbling and being privatized by the moment. Oh, childcare? Privatizing the hell out of that and getting federal dollars at the same time. This is the most corrupt premier in the history of this country. Although, you know, it is, it is a, a race between him and Smith, Daniel Smith, on who can, <laughs> who, who well, can lead. Well, so far Daniel Smith is breaking a lot of things, but I don't know how much he's lighting their own pockets with it. Doug Ford seems that every deal he signs involves something that's a little um, yeah. weird. It's another portion, at, another portion of the, our, our, our communal wealth being just hived off. Look at the head of the... Uh, the LCBO, which is, by the way, a three-year posting. He's been there five years. Yeah. 
actually six. She's been there since 2018. She's been there six years. Um, he is a developer. Um, yeah. The amount of grease on this one. <laughs> There, I had to find it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Speaking of greasy, I'm Doug Ford. Uh, Colin DeMello mm. broke a story yesterday on Twitter. New government by Gmail. Ontario Premier Doug Ford's chief of staff used private email for, quote, political discussions global news has learned. We viewed emails that show how government-related business is being conducted on Gmail. Global News has viewed dozens of emails sent to and received from Patrick Sackville using a Gmail account in which documents were shared, stakeholders' concerns were raised, and communication strategies on behalf of the Premier's office were crafted. Those emails stand in direct contradiction, contradiction to what Sackville told Integrity Commissioner J. David Wake, quote, I do not conduct government business on my personal email, end quote. Uh, yeah, J. David Wake is the, commission, uh, the Integrity Commissioner that a lot of people are wondering how... How much integrity does he really care about commissioning? Apparently not Let's very put it much that way. because they're using Gmail to communicate, which is in yes. strict violation of the rules. And it seems that at the time, uh, Integrity Commissioner J. David Wake just took um, Mr. Sackville's work, Sackville's work for it. Now, um, if you are sharing things on a Gmail, um, and if you're committing crimes and sharing things on Gmail, uh, you might as well just be broadcasting it, broadcasting it to the entire world. Yeah. Because number one, uh, Gmail is not particularly secure. There's a reason for which we have government email accounts. Mm -hmm. no um, also, did you not learn a damn thing from the whole Hillary thing? No, of course not. No, it won't happen to me. It won't happen to me. Seriously? Two? And uh, three you do realize that even if you double delete, right, Gmail has a server and then the peer bill to you send Backed it to up. all have it on their mail and they all have servers. And mm -hmm. so, which makes us wonder why, you know, she, she, Mr. Wake didn't really do like, why not go out and ask for a warrant and just to see, um, did you actually use your Gmail? Let's look at your metadata. See if we have any reasons like, what, what, how much investigating did this commissioner do? Um, so, Global News uh, article, Government by Gmail, Doug Ford's chief of staff used private email for political discussions, Colin DeMello and Isaac Callan. The chief of staff to Ontario Premier Doug Ford routine, rel routinely, routinely relied on personal email addresses to facilitate, sorry, let me try that again. The Chief of Staff to Ontario Premier Doug Ford routinely relied on a personal email address to facilitate government-related communications, Global News has learned, despite his assertions to the Ontario Integrity Commissioner that government work is always conducted using an official email address. So this was not a, this was a big lie. Yeah, huge, massive. Big lie. Because he routinely relied on something and then looked at the Integrity Commissioner straight in the eyes and go, no. No, not me. I, I, I would never. Like Johnny, maybe, but not me. Corruption. Thy name is Progressive Conservative Party. Of I, uh, I don't know where the chocolate cake went, Mommy. It was like chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. is like all here. Is that it's your like, lipstick? That's my lipstick. I bought it from Home Depot. <laughs> yes, my lip, my lipstick, exactly. Global News has viewed dozens of emails sent to and received from Patrick Sackville using a Gmail account in which documents were shared, stakeholder concerns were raised, and communication strategies on behalf of the Premier's office were crafted. And may I say right now that uh, it is 7.40 in the morning Eastern time, and um, that I know of, Doug Ford hasn't sacked this guy yet. Uh, if I were Premier of the province... Mm -hmm. Uh, that guy would have been sacked uh, about two minutes before that article came out. Yes. Because I'm sure my office got a heads up that it was coming. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's the level of corruption is ridiculous. It's, Those it's, emails stand in direct contradiction to what Sackville told Integrity Commissioner J. David Wake. I do not conduct government business on my personal email, quote. That's pretty categorical denial, too. There's didn't leave himself much wiggle room there. No. Yeah. He didn't use that. Maybe sometimes, I uh, guess, like this. I do my best to not use. <laughs> it's just that I do not. That's pretty open and uh, shut statement. 
In the letter to the commissioner earlier this year, Sackville also suggested it would be, quote, inappropriate to mix government and personal emails, and that he, quote, only conducts government business on my premier office email address. Oh, I know it's terrible. I would never do that. Mm -hmm. I know it's inappropriate. Me? No. No, never. Never. Oops. No, never <laughs> gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Really? Never gonna get it. Never gonna. Never get gonna it. get it. Yeah. While Sackville did not respond to a request for comment, gee, I wonder why. A spokesperson for the premier's office confirmed that staff use non-government platforms for government-related business. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. Quote: Google products like Google Docs have at times been used to support collaboration on materials for political discussions. Oh, yes, make it sound so innocent. These materials have corresponding records on government networks and decisions, or direction that inform government business are always provided through government networks, though through government email and during official government briefings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm old enough to remember whole green belt scandal where they brought somebody in to work into an office, but then didn't put them under the regular office structure. And then for some reason had the ability to make a whole bunch of decisions without asking either the minister or the premier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But everything always happens by the letter in this government. Sure it does. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, political critics say the emails raise new questions about whether the Ford government compartmentalizes information to keep it out of the public view and whether Sackville has access to other information relevant to the Greenbelt investigations that never came to light. The Ontario NDP is calling for Sackville's resignation. No shit. And here's the thing, uh, kids and cubs. Um, now that we know for a fact that uh, Mr. Sackville lied about this, uh, mm. should people doing some investigations because a word on the tweet says that there was some type of police investigation that started into the green belt stuff some time ago. And let's say they wanted to get at Mr. Sackville's personal emails, but let's say they had been thwarted from doing that legally. Well, now that we know for sure that he has done it. And if somebody wanted to get access to those emails now, uh, they pretty much have an open shut case to get them. And then uh, while they go get those emails, what are the odds that they might discover other gmails from his account about other things that might be being investigated or need to be investigated given that he routinely used his gmail account while claiming he never did it at all ever and he knew he didn't he, he didn't do it because he knew it would be wrong yeah it's all anyone anyone it's what are the odds what are the odds what are the odds if police got a word and started digging into that little box that they would find a treasure trove of stuff? Mm -hmm. Exactly, Carol DeLorenzi. And I am old enough to remember the gas plant scandal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, peppered through the stack of emails viewed by Global News are signs, minor and major, that Sackville's Gmail address has extensively been used for political discussion on government, official government business from the time he served as Ford's executive director of policy, then the premier's principal secretary, and ultimately as chief of staff. While Sackville never identifies himself by official title in any of the emails, I'm sure that's a deliberate choice that, um, oh, what's the legal term? Consciousness of guilt? Mm. Allegedly. Um, while Sackville never identifies himself by official title in any of the emails, the recipients of the emails, who are sometimes referred to as, quote, colleagues, suggest the messages are related to his position in the Premier's office. All the communications in the emails viewed by Global News are to and from MPPs, chiefs of staff, policy advisors, high-level employees in Premier Doug Ford's office, and stakeholders. That's a lot of people who are receiving messages from Gmail and decided not to uh, raise it as an issue. Yeah, that's a concern. Because you'd think that if you were a staffer and you were receiving messages on Gmail, uh, somebody would be sending a message saying, um, why are we doing this on Gmail? Mm -hmm. But everybody seemed to agree. They just looked the other way. Hmm. What do they call it when a whole bunch of people agree to do something illegal? Conspiracy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Racketeering. Uh, 
Yeah. In all instances, Sackville only uses private email addresses such as Gmail, MSN, and Hotmail accounts, suggesting widespread reliance on private email. In several cases, the emails are sent during work hours. Some of the emails include discussions on confidential governmental policy long before they were publicly announced by the Ford government, suggesting the private email address has been used by political staff to iron out the government's direction before moving the conversation to government email addresses. And here again, kids and cubs, uh, you should know that all of those discussions literally belong to you. When government starts treating the people like they are the enemy, to be overcome or the obstacle to be overcome in order to do what it is that they want to do. Uh, it's time to change the government for the same reason we change in infant's diapers. Yeah. They are using your money and on your time, making decisions that are supposed to be for your benefit and they are hiding all the discussions about how it is that they've come to that decision from you. Either because um, you're too stupid to understand what these plans are, or, well, if they knew what it is that they were doing, they wouldn't vote for us. Or even if they're doing something good, if they knew how it is how we're doing it, because you can do the right thing the bad way. We have processes for a reason. You're paying for this. You're literally paying for them to screw you over and hide the information from you. And then they make you try to dig to get it. A government that treats the people it's supposed to be serving and the people who are paying for them to do the work that they're supposed to be doing, allegedly in our name, should have a right to see the work. All Ontarians should be able to be like a math teacher and say, show your work. How did you get to that answer? They are hiding it. They already have cabinet confidence for the stuff that needs to be kept quiet so that they can have the frank discussions with full candor. They don't need to be using external emails. They should be disqualifying. There should be charges. There is no legitimate reason to go offline to have a discussion about what it is that you are doing that is supposed to be in the public's interest. If it actually is in the public's interest, you should have no problem with what you've done being public. Uh, Global News also obtained several examples in which Sackville shares Google slide decks and Google Docs to allow government staff to view and weigh in on provincial policy and legislation. Patrick Sackville has invited you to edit the following document when email reads, giving the recipient's address to a funding-related policy measure. They even have his own, own damn name on the thing. While the government said decisions or directions have always been provided through official government channels, Global News viewed one example where Sackville appears to directly greenlight policy over Gmail. Proceed, Sackville said in the email after a long back and forth political discussion over another policy measure. On Friday, Global News asked Premier Doug Ford for his view of his staff using private email for government business. That would have been the perfect time to say, what? I didn't know this. He's fired. Quote, they shouldn't plain and simple, Ford said flatly. They should be using government-issued emails. It's as simple as that. But they're not. They're not, Blanche. Given Ford's unequivocal view of the use of private emails, the NDP called for the Premier to fire his chief of staff. And again, if his view was that unequivocal, he'd be gone already. So the words and the deeds are not matching here. Quote, the Premier's chief of staff appears to have repeatedly misled the integrity commissioner under oath, said NDP leader Merritt Stiles. This is yet another example of a senior member of Doug Ford's team hiding things from the public. Mr. Sackville must resign immediately, and if he won't, the Premier must fire him. In late December, Sackville contracted Ontario's Integrity Commissioner to reveal, quote, an oversight previously undisclosed Greenbelt-related email that had been sitting in his Gmail account since October 22. Oh! So he pulled a Trump. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, the documents that I, I don't have documents. I don't have documents. What? Document. Oh, these documents. Sure. Oh, well, yeah, I'll give you back these ones here. No, you have them all like this. And now we know we didn't have them all. So now we know that like Trump actually went through the boxes himself, dug through them, kept what it is that he wanted to keep and then sent it back. And the whole point is intentional withholding. So if they say, give me the box back, and they say, I've given it to you, I'll give you the box back. I've given it to you, I'll give me the box back. Okay, here's some of the stuff that's in the box, but not all of the stuff that's in the box. You put your hands in the box to determine what stays in and what goes. Mm-hmm. You've just implicated yourself. Sit there, go like this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then remember also, like this, while the FBI was inspecting, Trump was all around. So guys... Are you having a good? Are you having a, uh, an easy time finding everything? Is are my people helping you? Oh, good. As like people are carting boxes like to in a whole other direction, putting some on a plane. <laughs> and it's like he said, they're like this. Oh, integrity commissioner. Uh, the, that 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 the, the, that email account. I said I never ever 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 used. Oh, I found one email. Here it is. Ain't I wonderful? Look at how transparent I am. The <laughs> one time I slipped up, I'm telling you about it. There you go. You don't need to look anywhere else now. I would never do it ever, ever, ever. I have never done it. I know that it's wrong. Oops, here's one that I did. Here, you can have it. Please don't look at the rest. Please, please, pretty please. I gave you one. Please. Mm-hmm. That email sent nearly two weeks before the FUD government publicly revealed the plan to carve out land from the Green Belt included specific information related to the government's policy with subject line, quote, special project dash GB. I wonder what GB could stand for. Green Belt? Get bacon? Get uh, bagel. No, nah, it's Green Belt. Definitely Green Belt. You sure? Yeah. Hmm. Green button? No, green belt. Definitely okay. green belt. Green belt, okay. Sackville, who served as Ford's principal secretary at the time, received the email from Ryan Amato. There's a name that should ring a bell. A central figure in the green belt scandal who served as a go-between for the premier's office, housing minister office, the developers with the land in green belt. He's the guy with absolutely no experience that they hired to put in the minister of housing's office, but then didn't give the minister of housing any oversight powers over him. Yeah. Amato's email exchange with Sackville on October 17, 2022 on personal email accounts contained a, quote, list of criteria for removals, including what type of location should be considered, what type of infrastructure should exist on the land, and what the potential offset of plan should look like. And again, this makes me wonder, was that Mr. Amato interviewed by the Integrity Commissioner? And if so, did he remember that email during that conversation or did he too say that he never used gmail for that type of thing because um if he wasn't sending he surely was receiving mm-hmm. if he wasn't pitching he was catching was lying. Sackville later offered an explanation to the integrity commissioner for why the email remained hidden for more than a year. Quote, I do not conduct government business on my personal email and would not have expected or anticipated such an email, particularly since there was some correspondence occurring on the government emails at that time. Uh, Word salad. Government of Ontario employees are required to conduct government business using government emails and servers to ensure transparency and effective record keeping, Sackville said. I adhere to this important policy and only conduct government business on my premier office's email. So precisely what I said. Oh, I didn't notice it before because I never use it except for this time. I only did it once. I, I I only did it once, and the one I happened to have done was Special Project GB. Hmm. Sure, Jan. <laughs> Sackville suggested he uses the Gmail address for personal party-related and non-governmental related business outside working hours only. Well, we know that's not true. 
as the article just stated, there were certain of, them, uh, certain of those emails that were sent during work hours. While the integrity commissioner accepted his explanation. So I guess the integrity, because this is in quotes, in his report said, I accept his explanation. While the integrity commissioner accepted his explanation, he also said, quote, it was unfortunate that Saxville did not find the email in accordance with the request for documents I made during the Greenbelt investigation. Oh, come on, integrity commissioner. The premier's office says all political staff have never have been reminded of their obligations to conduct government business solely on government accounts. Ooh, the integrity commissioner accepts the explanation, but says it was unfortunate that he didn't find the email before. Doug Ford says, I've reminded everyone of your obligations to conduct government business solely on government accounts. Good job, Mr. Sackville. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pat, pat. Quote, record management is part of the ongoing training that all political staff receive. We are aware of this obligation and all staff have now signed the required annual attestation to confirm that they have managed records in accordance with the rules established under applicable legislation, the spokesperson told Club. Yeah, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing ethical about any of these folks. Zero. Zero ethical. I didn't do anything wrong. I signed this piece of paper before I did the wrong stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's nothing ethical about any of this. <laughs> Jesus, Lord. All right, Mr. Grizzly. Do we have a show? We do indeed. Oh, boy. Mr. <laughs> and kids, that's, that, was, that, that was only two stories of the many I yeah. had for you today. It's just like, the, uh, this was, they are so bad at this. Uh, Mr. Grizzly uh, and kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So uh, tell your peeps and poops all about this. Um, if you would like to subscribe to our show and you do not want to miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl, she sponsored our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver. Lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, well... When uh, you subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, we have some uh, news about the Etsy shop. Yeah, I'm going to be shutting it down. Um, I, I, I'm, I might look at another uh, service provider. I might look at Shopify. But with Etsy uh, on $95 worth of order, um, so I had to pay out $95 to get things printed and, and, and done and and. The, the company that prints it doesn't do it at a cost price to me. They do it at the full catalog price, which means what you see on the page is what I have to pay to get it printed. And then Etsy takes a portion. So for $95 in sales, I received uh, 75 back. So I'm losing 20 bucks. So I, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't be losing $20 on a transaction of a, of 95. It's it, that's, I'm sorry, we're trying to turn a profit here. I'm not going to pay money out. So Etsy's going to go bye-bye. I'm going to take a look at Shopify and see if we can work something out better, but that's just un, unacceptable. I'm sorry. I, I don't have the money to be purchasing gifts for people. <laughs> I'm so, I just don't. So for every like hundred dollars you sell, we have to pay 20. How does anybody make money off that? $95 went out. Our profit from Etsy minus their fee is 75. The profit, the 100% profit, if it had yeah. it on the full margin, would have been exactly what we sold it for. So there's no margin. And then I have to pay $20 in Etsy fees. So there's no yeah. margin there. Yeah. That's I'm sorry. Dumb. I'm not trying to be an ass about this, but we're doing this to generate income. And if I'm losing money on a transaction, I'm simply not going to do it. So I'm going to be shutting it down soon and I'm going to migrate it over to Shopify and see if I can work out a better deal because this is just not going to work for me. Yeah. I'm going to see a kid says, he says you need to find a local t-shirt supplier that's local. Um, yeah. I'll try to see if I can find that. Well, we're looking for Maybe. print on demand, not just t-shirts, t-shirts, mugs, hats, you know, the, all kinds of merchandise, but mm -hmm. it needs to be print on demand because I can't afford to be buying product and keeping it in a storeroom somewhere. This is print on demand. Okay. No problem. But the company that's printing it is printing it at that and charging me. So here's the thing. This is what I didn't get. If you purchase something off the Etsy store right now, 
you purchase it at the, the sticker price, the printer doesn't get paid for that. The money goes to Etsy and they hang on to it. Mm-hmm. I have to pay the printer to print the document, mm-hmm. or whatever it is, but I have to pay the printer the full amount, the sticker mm-hmm. price on the Etsy store, not a reduced amount to mm-hmm. actually have a profit margin built in. So if I'm paying the same amount and then Etsy takes a cut, well, I'm not making any money. Right. So that's the end of Etsy. I'm going to be shutting it down by the end of the day. And I'm going to look at Shopify. Maybe we'll see if we can find something um, somewhere else that's beneficial. We're, we're doing this to try and turn a profit. There's no joke about that, right? It's trying yeah. to cover costs. It's expensive to run all of this. We've told you that before. Everybody's well aware. But I'm like, I can't operate at a loss. Yeah. I don't yeah. have that kind of money. Yeah. And as um, yeah, Kit Cassie says, help the lads out on coffee. I mean, there, there are lots of ways to help us out, you know, with merch and whatnot. But, you know, when you spend $40 on merch, it's not like we get $40. Uh, you know, if you, do, if you uh, donate 20, we do have the super chat on YouTube. And if you do that, but it's not like we get to $20 like this, we get about 70% on that. Uh, if the, the best way to support us is directly through coffee because we get like over 95% mm-hmm. of whatever it is that you donate uh, via coffee because there's literally just the PayPal fee. And that's we, it. Look, we get the, the, the benefits of having merchandise out there that helps advertise Absolutely. the name and the product. And, and we want merchandise out there, but I'm sorry, I can't lose. No, not at <laughs> a loss. I can't lose. Not at a so loss. They're, they're, you have to check the, the, the corporate account to see. They, Etsy would have deposited like 20 cents or something in the account. Yeah. You can go on, give me that information, what they did. I can give it, and then they'll send the $75 to you. You can send it to me, and I can cover most of my costs on that. Yeah. But uh, still out I, 20 bucks, though, is what yeah. it boils down to, which is a pain in the ass, because, again, yeah. the store it's, is meant to be profitable, not losing yeah. money. If we stick to T-shirts, I know someone who can uh, print on demand, at least like while we're still small. I'm not sure if they'd be able to keep it up. Um, because they all they they've agreed to print some uh, men's uh, mental health walk t shirts for okay. us so that we could have them for promotional purposes because they wouldn't have been ready from Etsy anyway because it was three month three weeks delivery time or something. Right. Um, so you know at least for now we can uh, just offer t shirts uh, via whatever website or whatever we have like this and if people will just send their order to us we can uh, I can have them uh, hand printed and sent uh, while the while the volumes are still small. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, but we'll find a way to, to do something that, oh, I'm so sorry that happened, Mr. Grizzly. You worked so yeah, hard. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know, it's like, it's just a pain in the ass. I was like looking at it going like, what? I paid out 95 and I'm only getting 75 back. Okay, Carol goes, how can I help? Can I store and ship for you? Uh, Carol, uh, send us something uh, to our email, uh, truenortheagerbeaver at uh, gmail.com, and uh, we can talk if there's a way you can help. Uh, but right now our question is inventory. It's not like we can get like 100 mugs made and, and yeah, it's pay them uh, and have them up front because who knows how long it'll take to sell 100 mugs. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can, uh, if, if, if you have a few ideas. Yeah, absolutely. You can help with production. Mohan says as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, send us something. Uh, we, we we're happy for any, any help you can provide. Mm-hmm. We really are. All right. Um, so no I mean, more. It's just, it's just one more. It's just one more straw on the camel's back is what it is. Right. For me right now. It's like, oh, come on. Yeah. All the other crap I'm trying to deal with, uh, the amount of effort and work and time that we put into all of this, which is fine, but, you know, I've got all this job thing and do I take a vacation? It's just one more little thing. It's not, yeah. it's not one cut, it's a thousand. Yep. Yep. I guess, yeah, Kit Sass goes, the damn fam's got this, Michael. Kit Michael says, I'm a supply chain expert. So like the, so, yep, the kits, the kits will help us to figure it out, I'm sure. Okay. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, so that's, uh, we did the pod page, no merch. Uh, if you'd like to support us, bake like Kit Elaine and go to our <laughs> Kit Toronto Dad. I know a guy who owns a printing company, but his last name is Ford. So that's. <laughs> no, 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 not happening. Thanks, Dan, but no, not happening. That's a hard pass for sure. That is a hard pass. The labels. The stickers wouldn't stay on the shirts. 
Oh, shit, I'm so terrible. Okay. <laughs> so if I make like Elaine and go to our, our YouTube page where you can click like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> and if you'd like to help us in other ways, our coffee page, as we mentioned, is coffee, ko-fi.com slash e beaver lowercase letters, all in one word. Uh, please, 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 please. Oh, Kit Cassie says coffee is also a greener way to support their pod. I did not know that, but thank you. Oh. Um or if you scan the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head, that will bring you directly to our coffee page where you will find our tip jar, uh, like Kit uh, Wendy did uh, yesterday uh, so, or the day before. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll give you a more fuller shout out uh, coming up uh, on Friday, hopefully. Um, I guess that's everything from the, uh, because democracy is something that you do, uh, get involved. Uh, if you're in Alberta in the NDP leadership race, if you're in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, or New Brunswick, you have provincial elections coming up. So find a way to get involved there. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there. So please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Do your due diligence before you enter into a contract. <laughs> Do, do your due diligence like you do. You Mr. may Grizzly. find yourself losing money. Please roll those credits. You. you are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right, uh, Kit Carol, Kit Mohan, and Kit Michael, look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and our email, again, truenorthegerbeaver at gmail.com. Uh, let us know what suggestions you have. Right. Mr. Risley, do you have anything? I was going to say we could uh, maybe quickly uh, look at the Cryer Media Merch Store. I was trying to set something up quickly because we haven't been able to get anything done. And I thought, well, let's just do this Etsy thing and see if we can make some. Nah, it's not, obviously it's not working out. So yeah. we'll talk to Cryer. Uh, if you can reach out to Dean later and let him know what the yeah. situation is. Um, give him, maybe give him the link to the Etsy store. To, I don't know if we can figure out how to move shit over, but I'm just really. Yeah, it, it's a kick on the, it's a kick on the nards right now. Yeah, it is. It really is. And yeah. uh, I just, I, I don't have the bandwidth for it at the moment. I just I don't. I mean, I've spent enough time trying to get the, the ads authenticated with the identification thing. That's yeah. done now. So Yay. that's a good thing. Um, so we can start getting paid via YouTube. But the amount of hoops you have to jump through just to make this work. Uh, it's like I have two full-time jobs. I don't know. I need a breather, man. <laughs> Pass me the baton, Mr. Grizzly. I'll run this leg. Pass me the baton. There you right go. Here. Put it right in my hand. There you go. Mm, it's there you yours. Go. Thanks. <laughs> make like uh, make like Andre de Grasse. Mm. All right. <laughs> I gotta go. I'll see you. Bye.